Welcome to Stunt Stories. I'm Corey Eubanks. And today I have a very, very special guest, very good friend of mine for 30, 40 years, Mr. Tom Sarmento. Tommy, thank you for coming on Stunt Stories today. I'd do anything for you, Corey. You know that. Well, then can you give me a hundred bucks? <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know, you've, you've done so much for me throughout my career that, that uh, people are completely oblivious to, and to a lot of stunt guys. And we, you know, there's, it can't put into words uh, how, to, how to express the appreciation for all you've done for so many of us, Tommy. Well, I really uh, enjoyed all this stuff, you know, and, you know, you guys learned a lot. And so, you know, when I saw your stunt bags and you had, you had wire in there, you had some rope, you, you had a pair of vice grips, you know, I, I knew that you guys knew nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you knew we had all the wrong tools and didn't know what the hell we were doing. Yeah, except Russell, in his bag, he had a bunch of rocks. Yeah, I wonder how those got there. <laughs> yeah, I, I, hey, I have a, you know what? For, for some of our listeners who may not know, you're a pretty famous guy, and I don't. there may be some who don't know who you are. Just a little, little introduction to who Tom Sarmento is. When I first met Tommy, he was uh, the head mechanic, um, or I should say, what, were you the only mechanic on the Dukes of Hazard? Well, I was the only one on the set. The only one on the set in, in shorts and a tank top when it was 32 <laughs> degrees in the morning. And, yes. and Tommy went on to not only, um, you know, keep all the general leaves intact and, and, and save us from all the cars that we'd crash and wreck and, and try to fix them so nobody knew that we'd crashed them and damaged them. But he also went on to become a stuntman himself and working on TV shows like Fall Guy and Hunter and also then became a feature film producer and produced uh, a film called Payback. And you were also an actor in that movie, if I, don't, if I recall correctly. Yes, and I had a speaking part because of Michael Ironside. <laughs> he says, Tommy, he says, you got to say something. I says, it's not scripted for anything, Mike. And he goes, but you got to say something, you know, as I says, he says, just think about what you might say. And, and I'll ask you a question. And I, I, I did. And I know I remember that uh, he asked me how much time's in those batteries. And I go, ah, oh, we got a couple more hours. So that was my big speaking part. That was your big speaking part. And, and if, I re my own if I recall, that's the screenplay that I wrote, correct? Yes, it is. So now that you wrote a line in the script, are you are you like trying to claim co-writing credit? Is that what's happening here? Mm, I don't. Think. <laughs> hey, Tommy. So let me ask some of of yes. all the generalese. This is a crazy a crazy question, and I I think I know the answer, but I got to ask it anyway. Of all okay. the generalese that you had on the show, did you have a favorite? I believe it was twenty six. And it was W, it's, no, it was GL26. Warner Brothers didn't own that car at that time. And that was Alan's favorite car that he drove. And what it is, is why I like that car so much, because it always did what it was supposed to do. Yeah, that, I remember that was also... It was Junior's car, and, and nobody was to drive that. That was like... That, that, that was his car. That was the and rule. I believe you used in the WGL numbers when Warner Brothers owned it, it was 28. Yeah, and remember, 08 was a good car. 08 was another good car. Yeah. Now, explain, you know? explain to everybody how you knew... The cars because were, were different because they they're all orange with a Confederate flag and O one on the door. How did you know? How did you um, know? Not that? Confederate flag. It's a rebel flag. What did I get? I said a Confederate. <laughs> you said Confederate. I've never seen the show before, so I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what what was what did you do to make the cars different from one another? Well, you know because see, O eight was a. It was a 440 car, 
uh, 26 was a 440 car. I believe 28 was a 383. And I believe that's the one that had that that diamond tuck interior that we painted over, and it made you sit up higher in the seat. Well, I guess what I'm getting at is how did you know car 28 was 28 and car 26 was car 26? The attitude, just the, just the way they were sitting. Well, also, didn't you well, in, engrave in the glass? Well, we, we, did, we, we did engrave the numbers in the window, uh, the rear window, uh, the left lower quarter, or part of the glass, uh, right, lo- right along where the uh, trunk was. Um, it was really kind of hard to see, but it, it was in there. So that was the ones that I used to have to take care of, you know, and I had log books. And what I did is, is I knew how many cars we were going to use that episode. So I'd put down the ones that we would need and then I marked them as the ones we used them so the Warner Brothers could charge Dukes of Hazard, you know, for renting those cars. Now, did you ever, I mean, I know on other TV shows, like I mentioned, Fall Guy and Hunter, and you've done some other films and TV shows. Did you ever get behind the wheel on camera on the Dukes of Hazard? No. Well, um, yeah, I thought you did. I thought there was. I thought there was an episode where you doubled one of the bad guys. No, uh, it was supposed. I was supposed to, and I think that was with uh, when Gary was directing. But when Warner Brothers found out I didn't have a SAG card, they said no. Oh, who? How did you get your SAG card? I got my SAG card on um, Fall Guy. Uh, a guy named Gary Baxley and um, one of the producers, uh, Bruce Kalish. Oh, it was Bruce. Uh, oh, my gosh. Yes. And what they were using is is uh, 20th Century bought the, the uh, uh, green machine. Oh, yes, the green machine. And you know how the green machine come about? No. I don't. I remember driving it, and it was a nightmare. Okay, it it was it was um, it was you and Russell off camera. You one, Russell was driving the Jesse pickup. You were driving the Jesse uh, the uh, General Lee, and you guys were looking for cows. Yes, I and remember because Paul Baxley you, wanted them in the background of one of the shots, right? Yeah, and he goes, hey, Corey, Eubanks, you go get that cowboy guy and get him back here. Well, that's when you guys hit head on in the road. Well, wait a minute. Let me make this really clear. Yeah. I was driving the appropriate speed, not goofing around. And yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is my this is my side of the story. And then Knucklehead Russell was showing off trying to do a big drift around the turn by by that that um water trough turn. Right. And all crossed up and sideways and I hit the brakes and stopped. I didn't skid to a stop because I really wasn't going fast enough to even <laughs> skid. I just stopped. And then the Colorado Cowboy came and hit me. I'm not even sure it wasn't intentional. Hit me with that General Lee and just destroyed the, both cars, didn't he? Yeah, well, he was. He didn't have the General Lee. Russell, Russell was in the truck. Oh, that's right. He was in the truck. I was in the General Lee goofing around. And I was power sliding and hit him. <laughs> I don't know. It was so long ago and so horrifying. I can't even remember what happened. I just well, what, what we had a was, collision. There were there there's three stories to the, uh, you know three stories. I'm sticking with Your mine. Story, Russell's story, <laughs> and my story. So wait a minute. How, what does that have to do with the with the green machine? Okay. Well, anyway, uh, the uh, Jesse pickup was towed, and uh, what they did is they took the um, the whole body off the, uh, the um, uh, Jesse pickup while we were on Dukes and. They built the green machine, and you know they just welded all that those pieces together, and it was never any plywood; it was all metal. 
there's stories out there from people saying it was made made of uh, plywood, but it was it was all metal, and we used it in two episodes on uh, on Dukes. And what happened is is that uh, Warner Brothers sold that to Twentieth. Gary was directing uh, Fall Guy over there at 20th, and he wanted to use that green machine, machine in one. And what it was, is that it was going to shoot flame at these two cars. And these two cars ended up being Eddie Braun and myself. Now, this is my first day using my side card. And Gary, he put me in a, in, in a uh, Ford Granada to do a double turnover with Eddie Braun. And, I uh, remember that, Tommy. Yes, yes. Wasn't that yeah. on its sun oil? Yes, it was its sun oil. Yeah. Yes. And that 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 was my that was my first that was my first turnover. And uh, so then I did several other uh, turnovers for. Uh, for uh, Gary on Fall Guy, and, and you, you and you and Russell were out there uh, when we met, we did that one in the black and white police car. It flipped it over, it snapped off that tree, and uh, it landed out there in the middle of the road. And then it skidded, and I stopped just right in front of camera. Wait a minute, that was on a that was on a Hunter, or was that Fall Guy? Wait a minute, no, that was. I remember that. I was positive Gary was directing. Yeah, it, was, it had. I think that was. I think that was a Fall Guy episode. Yes. Isn't it funny, Tommy, how all of those shows all kind of blend together? Hey, first of all, you sound like you're in a bar and you're drunk, but you're not. You're actually <laughs> laying. You're in the hospital right now, aren't you? Yeah, I'm in a rehab. I'm, I'm out of the hospital. I'm in a rehab program for 15 to 20 days. Is that because you stubbed your toe? Is that what happened? Uh, you know what? <laughs> That's how I did it. <laughs> uh, oh, gosh. No, it, it was a little more serious than stubbing your toe. Oh, yeah. But, uh, you know, they, they, they got me fixed up. You know, I mean, uh, you know, for my birthday, uh, my 75th birthday, believe it or not, I spent it in the hospital. <laughs> oh, gosh. Now, are you giving the nurses a hard time? Are you being nice? You, you know what? You can give the nurses a hard time, but you know what? When they come around to give you a shot, they got this one It's a big needle. And when they poke you with that big needle, it's like a little piece of a welding rod that they're using. Oh. It's you know, so you you got to watch what you say to some of these. Some some nurses have a sense of humor. Some don't. <laughs> yes, because <laughs> you have a very dry kind of unique sense of humor. Well, that's true. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you this: on on the Dukes yeah. of Hazard TV show, of all the stunt drivers, who is your favorite? Hmm. There, 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 there is a lot <laughs> you know, there, you know, what? Uh, you know, to tell you the truth is that you had, I thought more talent than, than most, not more than Al Wyatt jr. Well, you know, Al Wyatt only jumped, you know, you know, the first episodes, you know, and, you know, he got busted up, you know, pretty bad. You know, he, he never just showed it, you know, um, I mean, Al Wyatt went the furthest, furthest of anybody else, 237 feet over that train on Granny Annie. I mean, uh, that is still the most beautiful, awesome jump ever. Y yes, it is. And, you know, uh, I've got that one is, uh, you know, is, uh, one of the most spectacular jumps. And then, you know, one of the prettiest jumps was, uh, what Gary Baxley over the, uh, that sticks river with all that uh, dust behind it. Yeah, with the camera mounted on the passenger side. Yes, yes, and <laughs> you know, that was the day before we started. Uh, that was uh, in 1980 or 81, and uh, you know, but that was that was nearly 200 feet. You know, 
we we didn't have any way of measuring it. And then all the terrain and everything else like that's all changed now. And uh, but uh, that one there was one, and the one I thought was the most dangerous is um, the two sheriff cars head on. With oh Lance yes, Eddie. was that and, was that Lance Turner and Ted Barba? Yes, it was. It sure was. Yeah. And, you know, the thing of it is, is they had to do that just perfect. I mean, you know, Lance, when you talk to Lance and Teddy, they always go, Paul tried to kill us. And I go, what makes you think that? You know, and, and you know, you, you put them in these situations. Yeah, I but mean, they, no, 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 Tommy, I, I, re, I think, didn't Jerry Summers... And Bob Orson set those jump ramps, so they, yes, were, they did. They were offset just enough that they would hit. Yeah, op- yes, they did. Opposite headlight to opposite headlight. Right. Yeah. And th- th- we didn't have Bobby uh, that much, uh, you know, because uh, he went to um, Craig's show on um, A Team. Yeah. Yeah. He and Henry and, Kenji. And right, and Henry, Henry too. And, you know, they were there that day at, uh, on that set. And I know that they rehearsed that thing all morning. And it was the first shot after lunch. And, you know, we, I, we never had the set closed to everybody. There was nobody allowed, uh, you know, no visitors that day whatsoever. And we had a fire truck there. We had the Jaws of Life there. We had two ambulances there. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Everyone was thinking it was going to be someone was going to get seriously injured. Right. And the one who designed that was Paul Baxley. Yeah. Paul came up with a lot of crazy ideas. Yes, he did. And, you know, we ended up doing them. I mean, you know, uh, Lance, Lance, uh, Lance is going, uh, no, Teddy was going, uh, we had two cars, two police cars stacked on top of each other. It's supposed to hit a tree them and knock the car down, and then the car drives away. Well, they ended up putting Lance in the car, and Gary was driving. And Gary was driving too fast. It was supposed to be 25 miles an hour when he hit that tree. It was probably 45 miles an hour. And we had it uh, snatched with a cable, and AJ came out that day to... Uh, help effects and do uh, the cabling because he put a tire in between the cables so that that cable wouldn't snatch, uh, you know, snap. And then it just yanked that second car right straight down. And, you know, <laughs> Lance goes, that, he goes, that was really stupid because I shouldn't have been in the car. I, <laughs> I said, Lance, you knew that you, you, they told you that when you, you, uh, you came and you hit the ground, you're supposed to start the car and drive away. Well, the car had no motor in it. It didn't have a transmission in it. I said, it should have had a dummy in it, but Paul put you in it. Because <laughs> <laughs> you were the dummy. Hey, let, the me, dummy. let me ask you, who, who do you think, in your opinion, or maybe you know for a fact, who did the most jumps in the General Lee while we were filming the TV series? You know, you know that is that is a toss up between you and John Cade, and I th- I think that you ended up doing actually more than John Cade because you did you know a bunch of these these other. Um, were you talking about the the Duke's fests? Or are you talking? Yes. About, I'm, I'm talking about just on the TV show. Wouldn't, wouldn't you say no, that? Just, just on the Duke's Fest, or uh, just on the TV shows, I, I would have to say you did more. No kidding, because I've always given that credit to John Cade. I've always said nobody on the face of the earth has jumped the General Lee on the show, the Dukes of Hazard, more than jumping John well, Cade. You know, that's why I'm saying it, it's a toss up because, you know, in my log books, you know, I didn't, uh, I only did the log books for the last, uh, let's see, the end of the second season, 
but I never put who was driving. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. I always thought it, I always thought, um, and at least when I, well, was, and, people asked me, I, I go, Oh no, you know, nobody drove the general Lee more than, than Al Wyatt jr. And nobody jumped the general Lee on that TV series more than John Cade is. That's what I thought. It, 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 it's, it's really, really close. I mean, uh, between you two, because, you know, uh, John was actually out there before you and Russell came out there on the set. Yeah. Yeah. He started before I did. Yeah. And, you know, uh, for you to give credit to somebody like John Cade, I mean, John didn't do a lot of the driving stuff, you know, like, like you and, and Russell and, uh, uh, yeah, Russell did a lot of driving, like that time he crashed into me. Remember that? Yeah. With the truck. And <laughs> <laughs> well, wait a minute. You know what else he's responsible for? He is responsible. Russell Solberg is responsible for me having a head-on collision with John Schneider in his personal Corvette. Oh, on that Corvette. Remember that? And oh, yeah. Ru Russell was standing right there at the at the apex of the turn. He could see Schneider coming like right to left toward him. I'm coming left to right toward Russell on that kind of that hairpin turn and all the bushes. You can't see there's a car coming around the corner and John goes to power slide his Corvette kind of like to show off to Russell. And I was in a Roscoe car and I thought I'll do the same thing. But Russell, rather than saying, Hey, you know, putting his hands up, like stop, stop, stop. He clapped his hands together. Like, I don't know what that means when you're, in Colorado, <laughs> but in California, it, it, that means like you're killing flies or gnats or something. I don't know. But he gave us the wrong freaking hand signal, and we crashed head on into each other. And of course, because it was me, by the time the story got up to the first unit, it was Corey crashed into John. There you go. Yes. Irritated Instead, me. You know, <laughs> but didn't, didn't John stand up for you? Yes, he did. Because they were going to fire you. They were going to fire you. Yeah, because I was goofing around in the Roscoe car, which I know I shouldn't have been doing. But maybe right. if Russell had gone to hand hand sign school and knew how to give the correct hand signals, <laughs> that wouldn't have happened. So he's that in the crashing up there and around the water trough turn. That that was his fault too. Uh, that's yeah. all I'm going to say. <laughs> hey, yep. was it was it sad for you when the show got canceled and? Uh, you were no longer driving out there. We finished out in, in Valencia. I know we, Lake yep. Sherwood was a fun location, but was it right. sad for you or did you have a sense of relief? Well, you know, uh, they, they kept me on uh, for another two weeks while the first unit was finishing. And, you know, me just putting all the stuff back together in the cars. And, you know, uh, Skip Ward and uh, Ron Grove uh, come out there and, you know, they're the two two producers, you know, and, uh, you know, I said, uh, what you guys doing? Well, we just come out here to see what you're up to. And he says, uh, you can go home. I says, I worked for you for six seasons, and you're going to tell me I'm not going to finish out by the end of my uh, uh, stay. You know, I was supposed to stay till... Uh, you know, I, I, uh, Friday was going to be my last day, and they came out on Tuesday. I said, you're not going to let me finish it out? And he says, oh, yeah, you can finish it out. But he says, We're gonna, we'll pay you, but, you know, go home. And I said, what about these cars? I says, you know, I still got, I haven't got the brakes back on them. He says, just leave them as is. And then they asked me, they go, hey, Tommy, uh, would you like to buy these cars? I said, nah, I don't think so. <laughs> Imagine if you did. <laughs> and he goes, he go, uh, they go, how about $500 a piece? No way. You know, it's a, it's a very gracious offer. I don't know what I would do with 17 of these cars. 17 and, General Lees for $500 yep. a piece. Yeah, and, and, you know, I asked him. I says, well, Ron Grow, I said, Ron, how did you come up with $500 a piece. He says, well, he says, that's the average of what we paid for the cars when we bought them. And he said, uh, you know, the paint and the wheels and the decals and 
all, all the rest of the stuff, the push bars, I said, he said that was all charged off on shows. So that stuff has all been paid for. So all we wanted to do is get their money back. And I says, I, I can't do it. I, I have no place to put them. And I'm really not interested in not, not having all those orange cars. Wow, man. I mean, because now you and I both know what people would be paying to to have one of the original well, cars from the show, you know. And, and it's funny because yeah. I, I meet a lot of people, as you do, that, you know, they, they bring you your generally, like I just finished working on a, on a Transformers 7 movie up in Montreal, Canada. Uh -huh. And some guy brought a General Lee by for me to sign the trunk. And everyone, every guy who has a General Lee claims that, yeah, this was one of the originals from the show. And I go, oh, yeah. I go, that's great. That's awesome. And I, I kind of casually sneak back to where the, um, uh, the, where you, where you would do the glass engraving of the number and to see if yeah. that number's there. And if it's not, I don't burst their bubble by saying, nope, this is not one of the original cars. I just, I just let it go. Yeah. It, you know, because, you know, some of those people got screwed on those deals. You know, they, they, they wanted to believe that they were going to get one of those general lease, you know, for $20,000, $25,000. And you know, and I know that when after they first got sold, that, you know, the price on those things went up to fifty, fifty-five thousand, 55000 And then if they left it all alone, like they, they didn't redo the interior and they didn't redo the dash and you know, put all new sheet metal on it because, see, you know, when the show went down, you could actually start to buy all new sheet metal. And th what they did is they made those into trailer queens, and they may have put $50,000 worth of stuff in that car to make it all perfect, but it devalued the cars. Yeah, people wanted them just the way they came off the set. There you go. Yeah. Because one, one of the cars is the is the ski car, you know, Buzz Bundy's car. Right. Now, that sold about uh, four months ago for uh, $125,000. You should have bought those cars for 500 bucks, Tommy. <laughs> we, Do the math. Do the math. Yes. Yes. <laughs> hey, listen, I, I would love to have you, if you're, if you're game – when you get out of the hospital to do another stunt stories episode with me and we could talk about um, everything we did with the general Lee post Dukes of hazard uh, oh. <laughs> TV show. How you about know, you, you know something I thought you was the youngest one ever to wreck a general Lee. I think I was, I know well, I, I actually know I was, I was only 18. Well, eight, eight, no, you're not. There was somebody there that wrecked three General Lees and was eight or nine years old. That wasn't your son, Scott, was it? It sure was. Was it really? <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were out on a prep day out in uh, uh, Valencia Oaks, and we had, you know, there's a little bit of an incline, you know, behind where I parked my uh my truck. Well, I had a general Lee sitting up there and I told Scott and his friend, I says, you know, you can do whatever you want with the car, but you know, don't, don't take, you know, don't touch anything. And, uh, then I hear dad, dad, you know, we can't stop, you know? And what they were doing is that they would kneel on the seat. And what they did is Scott took the car and he, Put it into reverse, which it makes no difference if you know which was it going down the hill. So, uh, you know, he ended up uh, wrecking that one and two other ones that he hit. Well, good. No, so, I don't feel so bad. I thought it, I thought I was the guy who who no, ruined well, the most yeah. off camera. <laughs> yeah, but you, that one there. When when my son went down there, I could get that fixed. Mm. You know, and that. <laughs> And, and nobody knew about it. Yours, and we'll talk about it later, it took a long time to find that car. <laughs> yes, yes, it did. I know what you're talking about. Hey, Tommy, thank you so much for taking the time out of your hospital visit to chat <laughs> yeah. with me. And, 
And uh, you promise you'll come do another Stun Stories with me? I, I, I would love to, Corey. I, I definitely would love to. All right, buddy. Well, look, get, get healthy soon, and I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you later. Okay. You have a good Thanksgiving, too. All right, buddy. Thanks. Same to you. Give love oh, to the family oh. for me. All right. Okay. All bye right, bye. Bye bye. Well, that concludes another episode of Stunt Stories with my good friend Tommy Sermeno. Hope you guys enjoyed. And if you would please uh, consider subscribing to Stunt Stories, it would be greatly appreciated. And if you could also help spread the word to your friends so that they know that this little podcast actually exists. All right. Thanks again for listening. I hope you enjoyed.